A lot of people seem to think the value of React Native is that you're writing JavaScript in your mobile apps, so your web devs can write apps too. That's not the strength of React Native. Others seem to think that it's one code base can target both iOS and Android, and sometimes other platforms like Xbox or Apple TV or even Windows and Mac themselves. That's not the secret power either. There is some really cool stuff that you can do with React Native due to the abstraction and the design that it represents that I don't think we talk about enough. The simplest way I can put it is over the air updates. Because by design, React Native has a separation from the stuff that actually renders on your device, be it a native button on iOS or Android, or a native picture view on any platform at all. That abstraction separates the thing that renders from the thing that says what to render. And that thing that says what to render, that's JavaScript. It doesn't need to be compiled. Well, yeah, technically we're compiling our JavaScript. But once you've pulled in all your dependencies through Babel or whatever, you can just drop it in the runtime and it does what it's supposed to. Hopefully you understand where we're going here. You can change what UI renders on a device by swapping out the JS without having to update the application itself. If you wanted to change what UI renders on an app built with Swift UI or with Objective-C and the old app kit stuff, or on Android with the craziness that is the current Kotlin system, you would have to have native code on the device ready to go to do that different thing. And yes, technically that native code's already there with React Native 2. The difference is important though. The difference is that the JavaScript is saying where to render which element, where on Kotlin or on iOS with SwiftUI, you have to define all of the views ahead of time. You can't dynamically create new views unless you encode that behavior in the native application ahead of time. When you have this abstraction between the native layer and the commanding layer, like we do with React Native, you don't have to pre-plan all of the native code for all of the different UIs you might need to render. A common example, you wanna change the background color on on one part of your app for a holiday. If you don't ahead of time, put that in the native code, get that through app review, often weeks in advance, and then have a server side flag to flip that on and off, that's really hard to do. Where with React Native, you can quickly update the JavaScript, say, hey, change the background color on there. And when a user opens the app, fetches the newest JavaScript, renders the different color. And then after that, push a new binary that removes that when you want that behavior to go away. If you have small UI bugs, or you realize that on some phones, a button gets scrolled out of view because the screen isn't big enough, or all of the types of crazy things you'll encounter as a mobile dev, similar to what we encounter as web devs, having the over-the-air capabilities to change the JavaScript and make these adjustments in order to render the right thing on the user's device is essential, especially at large scale. Like imagine you're at Facebook, you made a change, it gets the app review, you ship it, and then it breaks some number of users' experience with a feature. Or maybe the new feature you added isn't in view because it's like on some devices, it's too small and you can't see it. Well, now you have to make a new native app update to change that. You have to wait however long it takes for Apple to review it. You have to ship it out, then you have to hope users actually update to the new version, which often they won't. This is where things get really painful. If you're bound to what your native binary can do, you can't do much because so many users will be on really old versions of their apps and just never upgrade for many different reasons, most of which are dumb, all of which are real problems. It's really hard to be on an old version of a website that's more than like a few minutes old, but it's very, very common to be on an old version of a native app. Because of that, every major company that builds native applications has invented crazy solutions to these problems. Even at Facebook, they didn't just do React Native. They had a crazy project called Project Lightspeed, where they rewrote the Facebook Messenger app using SQLite as a commanding layer. So instead of using something like React Native or traditional native code to define all the views, they define in a SQL structure using a local SQLite database on your phone, what UI should go where. And then the native layer renders whatever SQL tells them. So if they need to ship a change, they can send a SQL migration out to users that gets applied in the SQLite cluster on their phone to restructure structure the UI. That is insane, but it's really cool. But also the fact that we have to do this in the first place is absurd. And I sincerely hope not many of you have had to run into these problems in production, but when you do, you need a solution for it. And React Native just supporting this as how it works is so, so powerful. But it doesn't just stop with OTA because server components promise an even brighter future coming soon. Right now, when you're using a React Native app, it has JavaScript on it that is taking whatever data you're fetching from APIs and then telling the native layer what to render where. But it's taking JSON from a server. What if instead of having to update the JS to change what rendered, the JSON wasn't JSON. It was actually structured markup that told the mobile device what to render exactly. So your API request wouldn't just show you what data, it would show you the shape that data should be rendered in. This might sound like something you've heard about, server components. Server components on mobile are going to be groundbreaking. I gave a whole talk about this at Chain React. They let me keynote it for some reason. But the thing I was excited about is that we could now have a payload the server sends to the client that is really really 
simple to write because it's just React. But on the client, it will now change what renders. It's not just what data renders. You don't have to write custom logic that's like, if user render this, if date is passed here, render blue. You would just write the code on the server that returns whatever. And now on the client, it just does it. You don't have to worry about shipping the right code to the client if the server can describe the shape the client should render it in. This is one of those huge promises that comes with the server component model. When JSON isn't the primitive we ship from server to client, the shape of what should be rendered is what we're shipping instead. Really, really powerful things become possible where you could render entirely different layouts for your app, depending on specific user characteristics without having to ship different JavaScript to those users or ship all the JavaScript to all of the users. That's so cool. And I think we miss these benefits when we look at React Native because we're just comparing the performance or the tech specs or how much we hate JavaScript developers. We're not actually talking about the ergonomic wins and the potential user facing wins of having a dynamic layer controlling the native UI. React Native is so powerful because it controls what native does with a really powerful abstraction. And the future of that abstraction gets brighter every day. Do you work on native apps? Can you update them without going through the app store? What does your process for that look like? And what was your favorite thing about what we just talked about here? I know that React Native is a sore spot for a lot of people, but it's important that we acknowledge the things it does better than anything else. And a lot of this is why React Native was created in the first place. These abstractions are powerful. It's important that we understand why they're powerful and why so many people find them necessary. Thank you guys as always. I'll pin a video in the corner where I talk all about the benefits of these patterns and hell, I'll pin my talk underneath it too. Thank you guys again. See you soon. Peace nerds.